Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation, and in this video, I'll be giving you a quick start guide to remote management with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So the idea here is this training is going to cover getting Intel Endpoint Management Assistant going for managing devices that have Intel Active Management Technology, part of the Intel vPro platform, with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. I'll also briefly cover the software-based management that you can do for non-vPro systems or systems that you don't want to activate AMT on. There's a few assumptions in this video. For instance, the Intel vPro devices that you're going to want to manage out of band are remote, say for people working from home, that you don't have physical access to them, uh, that you have access to a functioning cloud-based install of Intel Emma, and finally that you have a basic understanding of what Intel AMT is. Now, if you haven't gotten a background on this kind of technology yet, I recommend that you take a look at the Intel Business YouTube channel and watch our video series that goes through and explains how to set up uh, an Intel Emma instance and get things running. In addition, if you'd like to learn more about the Intel vPro platform or Intel Active Management Technology, please take a look at intel.com slash vPro or intel.com slash AMT for more information. With that, let's get started in talking about the process of configuring Intel Emma for remotely managing devices. Now, when you're activating Intel AMT on remote devices, especially those on networks that you don't control, you're going to need to use the client control mode to activate AMT. It doesn't have the stricter network and certificate requirements that come with admin control mode and is designed specifically for these kind of scenarios. One thing to keep in mind though when you do activate in client control mode is that user consent will be mandatory for certain functions in AMT like KVM remote control. However, user consent isn't required for other functions such as power control commands. Next, I want to talk about the supported network interfaces for Intel AMT. Uh, Active Management Technology will work with our built-in Intel Wi-Fi or built-in Intel Ethernet interfaces that come on the Intel vPro platform, but it doesn't work with USB adapters, uh, USB docks, Thunderbolt docks, etc. It has to be those trusted Intel network devices that are built into the system. Now, the one exception would be docking stations that provide an electrical pass-through for the Intel Ethernet adapter that basically just give you a way to plug a cable directly into the Ethernet that's built-in and supports Intel AMT. Next, I'd like to talk about a few things to keep in mind when you are working with Intel AMT and a remote workforce. First, Intel AMT does not run on laptops that are turned off or hibernating and not plugged into AC power. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want to drain the battery when the system's not in use. And two, we don't want to turn the laptop on, say, when it's in somebody's backpack or bag and could overheat. However, Intel AMT does run when laptops are on battery power and fully powered on or in sleep mode. So for instance, if you have somebody who's working from home and having trouble authenticating with uh, disk encryption tools, for instance, you could still use AMT when they're running on battery to help diagnose and solve their problems. And next, laptops using Wi-Fi may require some additional configuration to work with Intel AMT when the system is off or the operating system is not functioning correctly. And we'll talk about that here in the next slide. And finally, the remote management experience really depends on the quality of the remote user's internet connection. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, if you have problems using Intel AMT uh, with a Wi-Fi connection for your remote workforce, there's some steps you can take to debug and solve that problem. First, make sure you're running the latest version of the Intel management engine and Wi-Fi drivers on all the devices you want to manage, and you get those from your device manufacturer. Next, you want to check uh, some registry settings here. So if you go into H key local machine, software, Intel, wireless, AT6, there'll be an IAMTE option in there. If you set the value of that option to 2, every time your user joins a new Wi-Fi network, a pop-up will come up asking if that profile should be synchronized into Intel AMT. If you'd prefer not to have a pop-up come up and have all those new profiles automatically synchronized into Intel AMT, you can set the value of that to 10. Now, Once you've got that value appropriately set in the registry, you'll want to instruct your end users to delete their home Wi-Fi network from the list of known Wi-Fi profiles in Windows, and reconnect. That'll trigger the synchronization of the Wi-Fi profile from Windows into AMT, and you should be able to manage that device across power states just fine. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what this process looks like, and let me give you a demo of the configuration of Intel Emma for managing AMT devices remotely. We've logged into the Intel Endpoint Management Assistant website as a tenant administrator. And in this case, I've got a brand new tenant, so there's no configuration. I'm greeted with this screen. Let's go ahead and get started. I had to go through and actually create my Intel AMT profiles first. So we'll start that process. We're going to give the profile a name, a description. 
and we're going to stick with the client initiated remote access option for configuring AMT. What that's going to allow my clients to do that are behind firewalls or for people that are working from home, it's going to allow those devices to reach out through those firewalls, find my Intel Endpoint Management Assistant server in the cloud, and establish that secure connection to manage those devices. The TLS security model doesn't work in quite the same way and is not really ideal for these cases where I've got people that are working from home that I need to manage at a hardware level. With that, we'll go to the management interfaces. We're going to select everything here. And I'm going to change the timeout for user consent from 60 seconds to a value of 300. That's five minutes, which is quite a long time. But I want to make sure there's enough time for me to get user consent, no matter the quality of the network connection for the person I'm managing. Next, we'll go to Wi-Fi. We're going to leave the default option of allow Wi-Fi connections without a Wi-Fi profile. We could pre-configure Intel AMT with Wi-Fi profiles, say for our corporate environment. But in this example, we're talking about a workforce who's working from home, so we don't need to worry about pre-populating Wi-Fi. We're also going to check the options to synchronize with the host platform Wi-Fi profiles and to enable Wi-Fi connections in all power states. And that's all we need to do for the AMT side. We're going to save this configuration. And next, we'll create an endpoint group. The endpoint groups are how we group computers together to manage them inside Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. We'll give this group a name, a description, a password, And then we'll come down to the group policy. Now, these are all the software-based functions that you get with managing devices using Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So, of course, we offer the great hardware manageability you get with Intel Active Management Technology to manage those devices, those vPro platforms, at a hardware level, no matter the state of the operating system. However, we do include software-based manageability as well, and that can be used on any Windows platform. So I've enabled all those functions here. Just for demo's sake and making things a little easier for me, I'm going to turn off user consent for that in-band KVM. So again, the policy I've just set here in this section called Group Policy is strictly for the software-based management that works as long as the operating system is up. And that'll work on any Windows computer. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to hit Save and Intel AMT Auto Setup. Now this is where I can go through and ensure that my devices that support Intel AMT, again, all my vPro devices, uh, can go through and have AMT automatically configured as soon as they get added into Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So we can see we have our remote workers policy here. We have our activation method of host-based provisioning. And all I need to do now is put in an admin password. And this password is only going to be used in very certain cases where you need to debug problems with AMT. It's not going to have to be something that's widely known or shared. So make sure you have a copy of this password saved somewhere secure in case you need it. All right, with that, we're going to hit Save here, and we're nearly complete on the, uh, the back end of things. All we need to do now is grab a copy of the Emma Agent. So we're going to go to the Ellipse menu here, the three dots. We're going to choose Create Agent Files. In my environment, I'm using 64-bit versions of Windows, so I'm going to select the 64-bit service. Choose Download. We'll save that file. I'm also going to download the policy file. I'm going to need both of these to be able to activate Intel AMT and activate the Intel Emma agent on my devices. All right, now that I've got both of those files, I'm going to go ahead and copy them over to the client that I'll be managing, and we'll show you what that process looks like there. This is the client device we'll be managing. I'm attached to it right now with an IP KVM switch, so you can see it on my screen here. And I've got the Emma agent uh, installation here, as well as that configuration file we downloaded. Now, I'm going to be doing this installation by hand here, but you could certainly automate this and deploy it using any software management tools you have that handle software deployments in your environment. So to install this, I need administrator rights, so I'm going to right-click on the Emma agent, run it as administrator. We see here the remote workers policy that we previously defined as part of that uh, setup we did on the server on the back end. We'll choose install and update. And as soon as we see the interface disappear, we'll know that the agent is installed. All right, the installation is complete. And let's switch views here and take a look at things on the, uh, the server as well. All right, so in this view, you can see I've got both my PC that I'm managing remotely down in the lower right corner of the screen and the IT technician view that you see from the Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. And let's go take a look at how we can manage this device. I'm going to go to my endpoints list, and we can see that this computer has shown up. Uh, Intel AMT is not provisioned yet. That process takes a few minutes after it joins the server, so we're going to let that flow 
And in the meantime, I'll just step through a, a quick tour of what you can do to manage this client. So when I bring up the view for this particular client, I can see that it's powered on. I can see our in-band Emma agent is connected. So we've got the Intel AMT tab where all of our out-of-band functionality works. And then here we also see desktop, terminal, files, processes, and WMI. Now these are all functions that are part of the MS software agent that will work across any Windows device provided it's powered on and has a functioning operating system. So desktop is pretty self-explanatory. That's what's going to let you go through and connect up to the system at a software level to remotely manage that device if you need to. Again, if Windows is up and running, and this works on any Windows device. Uh, Terminal is nice. It lets you go through and bring up, a, say, a remote command prompt. So if I want to debug systems without interfering with my user while they're working, I can do some behind the scenes uh, debugging there. And of course, files, which lets us copy files back and forth to the system. This can be useful, say, if I need to help a person who's got a problem with their VPN client getting into the corporate network because the Emma agent works through the internet, works to my cloud-based Emma server, I can go through and solve VPN problems for customers very easily remotely. Processes is free self-explanatory. You can see processes running on the system. And then WMI lets you go through and execute WMI queries against the system. With that, let's go take a look and see if Intel AMT has finished configuring. Uh, we can see that it has, and that we have Sierra connected now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Intel AMT tab. And the last thing I'd like to show you is how that user consent flow works. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the remote desktop here, and I'm going to connect up to my device. And what you're going to see is it's going to pop up a little notice on the screen of my device I want to manage, uh, letting that person know that I want to get their consent to manage their system. So let's change the view here a little bit so you can get a better idea of what that looks like. Uh, so this particular uh, window that you see here that I have on my remote uh, client that I'm managing is displayed only in hardware. This is not displayed through Windows and software, so you can't screenshot and get a copy of this screen. Uh, so with that, we're going to go to our uh, IT technician view here, and I'm going to enter that code into the screen. One, two, three, two, zero, zero. And once I enter that code, I've got my access. So you can see here, we've got user consent. We've got a flashing border around the screen to let the remote user know that I've got a connection to their display and can see what's happening, as well as a little flashing icon in the corner. And from here, I can go back in as a technician and do what I need to do to manage this system, be it reboot, send it into BIOS, any of those functions I need to be able to manage it at a hardware level, I'm able to do. Well, that completes the demo and the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, again, please visit us at intel.com slash vpro or intel.com slash amt.